I mean, you can see the security here. Uh, Brian Yanis, thank you for that report from upstate New York. As you were, you were talking about just kind of tying things together from the Soros package on Monday. Now, fast forward to where we are today and bringing things together in this investigation. I want to talk to now Jim Carafano, who is a security analyst and senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Jim, thank you for joining me. Uh, you specifically can talk about what it's like to protect high profile uh, people. I, and, and they do have a little different way that they roll. I mean, that the mail center that was collecting mail for former right. presidents, that's different. But the actual people, what is that like and how does that change today for the individuals that we know about? Well, this is a, a good illustration of how, how things have changed since 9-11. I mean, the response that we have is really built on not just the terror, terror attack in New York, but also, if you remember, the anthrax attack after that. Mm -hmm. So we are, with high-profile officials, the screening of mail is much, much more common. And when I look at this trade craft, it, it, from what we know, it actually appears pretty amateurish. These look like suspicious packages. So these are exactly the kind of things that uh, any, any trained uh, screener, any person with physical security background would, would, uh, would uh, check out. Uh, so again, in terms of protecting the people, uh, and, and I just want to kind of lean on your expertise, I mean, things are changing. We're seeing uh, the tactical right. units here in New York. They have to be here. We're right off of Times Square, so they're looking at that. But protecting that high-profile politician or leader or person in our community uh, is different today than it was yesterday for them. So a big part of that is, you know, we see the guards, you know, we see the screening, we see gates. But a big part of that is the risk assessment that you do. So when these official, when these people go out in public and in their public spaces, the the assessment that we do about what's a logical, rational risk um, for this. So that's a big part of what we do. We do it every time we have a major public event. People mm -hmm. assess what's the concern here. But the other big piece of that is is really the situational awareness. It's law enforcement, intelligence, sharing information every day, gathering information, trying to identify threats before they happen. So I, I would imagine that just the, the George Soros incident alone, not even saying whether that's connected to this, because I don't know if we can say that yet, but the fact that that happened, that kind of information gets widely shared and distributed. So people are already on a higher state of alert and readiness. You know, it's interesting because uh, John Roberts was saying that the NYPD was already talking with people in the mailroom at, at the Time Warner Center. And we don't know if that was a connection from uh, the Soros package that was found on Monday. Uh, but it is an interesting detail in all of this that they were already saying you've got to be ready. And what's really important about this is what's very significant here is that these packages, not the Soros one, but these other packages, they were taken whole. In terms of gathering uh, information on who might have done this, that is a huge boon, right? Because now forensically you can go in and it's much, much easier to forensically look at a package that hasn't blown up to identify things from serial numbers to fingerprints to DNA and everything else. And so my guess is they're going to have a boatload of information just from forensically analyzing these packages, any videotape they might have had of, of somebody in placing them or putting them in the mail. And so my guess is they'll have a lot of information very quickly that will lead to an investigation. And that's the right way to do that. The one thing you never want to do is, you know, I'm, look, I'm the son of a cop. You don't start a law enforcement investigation by saying, who do I think did this? Or what kind of person did this? Or what's their grudge? You start with, what is the information? What is the evidence that I have? And you let that drive the course of the investigation. Jim Carafano, thank you for that detail. Appreciate it.